You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Coronavirus continues to ravage the nation. Texas passes 1 million cases. Folks, here are the total number. 10.4 million cases uh, across the the country. Uh, that is, uh, cases reported in all 50 states, 241,000 people uh, have died as a result of coronavirus. Uh, it is uh, still uh, a, a huge, huge issue in this country. And in spite of the continued spread of the deadly disease, the Supreme Court is hearing arguments uh, to end the Affordable Care Act. 23 million people have health insurance as a result of the Affordable Care Act, which is critically important, of course, during this pandemic. President-elect Joe Biden has made it clear that health care is a top priority for his administration. In order to manage our health care crisis, though, we need to address a number of issues that affect health outcomes, particularly in underserved communities and especially African-Americans. Joining us now is attorney Daniel Dawes, who was instrumental in shaping the Affordable Care Act. His latest book is called The Political Determinants of Health. Glad to have you uh, on the show, Daniel. This is... Um, this is, uh, again, a, a major issue. Before, we talked about your previous book that dealt with 150 years of uh, the Affordable Care Act, if you will, the battle that took place just constantly in this country uh, when it came to health care. And, and, and Donald Trump has no plan. Republicans have no plan. And, you know, we saw on the, on the, on the stump, these Senate candidates, uh, John James in, in Michigan, uh, no plan. Uh, and all they can do is criticize the Affordable Care Act. Uh, they talked about, oh, how it was a fail massive failure and we're running it better. Well, it's kind of hard to call it a failure if you're so-called running it better, which means that it actually served a purpose. And so this still is a contentious issue. And for some reason, uh, Republicans uh, just don't want to acknowledge the reality that this is important to the American people. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Roland. Of course, it's always a pleasure to be with you. And um, let me just uh, start by saying that we know that over the last 10 years that this law has been hanging in the balance. But this third case before the Supreme Court is the one that is pushing it to its closest brush with death. So let's put it in perspective, right? We know that the uninsured rate for African Americans under the ACA has declined by 50 percent, right? We know that's true for whites as well, even though they may deny that. But it is true that we have seen the uninsurance rate drop significantly. When Obama was leaving office, the nation's uninsured rate actually dropped for the first time to its lowest level at 8.6 percent at the end of 2016. Then when Trump became president, we saw that number starting to creep up again. 8.7% in 2017, 8.9% the next year, and then at 9.2% in 2019. Is it any wonder? And yet, as you mentioned, we're in this triple pandemic, right, of COVID-19, this racial and social reckoning that we're going through with high rates of disparities that for the first time, many people are actually getting to see now, right, for what we were talking about, as you mentioned in previous episodes, talking about health inequities in America. So there is a lot to unfold, and I'm looking forward to having that discussion with you. The thing that, when you talk about those numbers, uh, Donald Trump yeah. loves to tout uh, how great he has been for the blacks, uh, but they don't seem to bring up this number. They don't seem to bring up which number? Uh, in terms of the, the numbers you just cited. Right. They don't. And and let me tell you, that is quite upsetting. They don't even tell you about the uh, fact that uh, we've lost, what, half a million people per year uh, since he became president have lost health insurance coverage. He hasn't talked about how they've been undermining the Affordable Care Act administratively. Right. So let's put the issue of the ACA case uh, that we are currently talking about. Let's put it on the side for a minute. But administratively, we know that his administration has been defunding the navigators, the assisters, and other programs that were intended to increase uh, coverage and enrollment in our community, right? 
They don't talk about the fact that they used lots of that money to run negative ads about the Affordable Care Act, again, to undermine the law. So there are a lot of things that have happened administratively that um, we should be taking notice of as well. So, um, so we have this case, and so obviously we'll wait to see what the Supreme Court uh, decides. Uh, but um, what then happens, what changes with a Joe Biden being in the White House? Sure. So I think what you're going to see is um, Joe Biden pressing that rewind button on the Trump administration's health policies. And then you will see an unwinding of many of those regulations, uh, many of those sub-regulations and executive orders that um, President Trump had uh, signed. And um, what this means is that you're going to see this unwinding of policies around the Affordable Care Act, right? Uh, we could talk about that quickly if we have time. We know that also with the Medicaid program, we will see some unwinding there. Same thing with reproductive health. Uh, drug pricing is going to be another issue, along with many of the health equity provisions that were included um, and that were bolstered by the Obama administration. So I think you're going to see a lot of that happening. You know, the, the truth be told, the Trump administration has actually been working over time to undermine any of the health policies that were intended over the last 40 years, in fact, intended to bolster health equity. Policies that I know many of your viewers, um, you know, have been working diligently on a bipartisan basis to get implemented. But the Trump administration is the first administration that has been very strategic, very deliberate in undermining those uh, health disparities. And in fact, even the HHS strategic plan, the Department of Health and Human Services strategic plan, which had long enjoyed um, the prioritization of health equity or the reduction or elimination of health disparities, that is no longer a priority under this administration. I think Biden, as we all know, is taking a very robust health equity lens to the work. And I think what we will see uh, is greater investments than even under the Obama administration. From what we can tell, you'll see greater investments in this effort to advance health equity for all groups. Um, and, and that particular point, uh, again, this is what people have to understand. With Biden being in the White House, this has nothing to do with Congress, nothing to do with whatever they decide uh, until the Supreme Court rules. If they rule to affirm the Affordable Care Act, uh, again, they will control the levers of power and now go back to aggressive recruitment uh, uh, and trying to uh, help folks when it comes to the Affordable Care Act. That's right. So I think, you know, there are a lot of uh, priorities that... Um, uh, VP Biden had in mind um, the public option being one of those, which I'm still hopeful that it is a very popular health policy. But essentially what the VP wants to do with that, and I'm a little nervous about uh, the turn of events then relative to the Senate, because if he doesn't get that majority, it's going to be a little more difficult unless he can pull off uh, some of the more moderate uh, Republican senators. But this public option, right, intended to... Um, uh, increase uh, individuals who are between 60 and 65, allow them to access uh, Medicare, right? There, are, there was also an attempt for those who fall in that gap. Uh, they live in states that haven't expanded Medicaid. Uh, they live in states where they cannot afford the um, premiums in the health insurance exchange. Uh, VP Biden wanted to uh, open those up as, as part of his public option policy priority. So that, I'm afraid, may be challenging uh, depending on the outcome of the Senate. All right, then, uh, Daniel Dawes. We certainly appreciate it, man. Thank you so very much. Again, folks, uh, please pull up the book. Uh, his new book is called The Political Determinants of Health. That's, uh, of course, that's uh, critically important uh, when we talk about what's happening with us and how we have been negatively impacted by coronavirus. Daniel Dawes, thanks a lot. Thank you, Roland. Appreciate it. All right, folks, back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, at Seek.com, I want to thank you for being a partner with Roland Martin Unfiltered, Mary Steele, the founder of this black-owned virtual reality company. 
You can watch their content at Seek.com, C-E-E-K.com. This is one of the headsets that you can use. It's virtual reality headset. Drop your phone right into here. Look at that content, that VR content on their site. Other 360 degree video uh, puts you right uh, right there up close and so you just pop it on like this and then you're able literally to just sit here and put yourself in the room and see everything that's around you 360 degrees. Now, uh, if you listen to music, folks, you can check out the music uh, on their uh, Seek.com headphones. These right here, folks, are 360 degree 4D headphones. The bass on these things are absolutely amazing. Surround sound, so literally when you're listening to it, the sound actually is around uh, your whole head again. Created by a system. Uh, if you want to uh, get uh, the headset uh, the, uh, for the uh, music or the VR headset, uh, simply use this promo code RMVIP2020. RMVIP2020. Christmas is coming up. Great, some great gifts. Matter of fact, my birthday in nine days. So I'm just just, just giving y'all a hint. Uh, so use a promo code RMVIP2020. Uh, and go to seek.com. And again, we appreciate them being partners with us here at Roland Martin Unfiltered.